Hey everyone, my name is Zach Redrup, you're listening to the It's Not A Phase podcast, and on this episode I'm joined by vocalist Benji Yap and bassist Damo Darby of the UK pop-punk band Gold Bloom. We talk about their new Hazy EP, how and when they joined the band, signing with A Wolf At Your Door Records, their plans for the future, and loads more. Now, if you enjoyed this or any other episode of the podcast and you want to show your support, there's a few ways that you can do that. Number one, leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. It takes just a few seconds and it really does help. Number two, share this on your social media, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Or number three, if you want to go the extra mile, you can pay a little bit each month to join the Patreon and in return you'll get access to episodes early along with some of our perks. Or you can pick up some merch from the store. All the links to that and the podcast socials where you can follow us can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's itsnotaphase.co.uk. UK. And now, with all that out of the way, let's jump right into this week's episode of It's Not a Phase. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me on this episode of It's Not a Phase, where I'm joined with Benji and Damo from Gold Bloom. How are you guys doing? Woo! Hello. Hi, Ed. Yeah, oh. fantastic. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, thanks for joining me. Thanks for taking the time. So let's just get into the, the kind of the start of Gold Bloom. So I know you guys weren't there from the very beginning. But do you know how the, the band kind of formed and how that all kind of started? Because, you know, on the grand scheme of things, you guys are a fairly new band. Oh, that's I mean, that's a, that's a really good question, like from the get go. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know how they even started. Necessarily. Sean, Sean is like the one true original member of the band. I know he was. He was there at the beginning. Yeah, no, so like we got, yeah, like our kind of like our main boy, um, yeah, Sean in the band, he, he kind of is essentially like our manager, like, behind, like he sorts everything. But yeah, he's he's like the one OG member. Like once upon a time, everyone in Gold Bloom was from uh, Liverpool in the UK. But like since then, <laughs> like Sean's the only member from Liverpool actually now, like the other two are from the Northeast and uh, and then we're like based in the West Midlands sort of thing. But um, but, but yeah, like, I, I it was it's interesting like, I, was, I, I was a fan of the band before we ever even before you know with any contact sort of thing like i, I don't even know how i come across them i think i just saw a youtube video and i was just just into a couple of songs and it was over lockdown and just di- didn't didn't think anything of it. i was like yeah it's just a, you know. I, I remember being pretty stoked on myself actually being like yeah good good for you ben you get into an underground band <laughs> <laughs> being like, like a little pat on the back for myself there such a good lad. Such a good lad. but then but then like cut to like eight months later or something like that and i'm getting a message being asked to join i'm like oh my god i'm being asked to join <laughs> gold bloom like the <laughs> gold bloom <laughs> and like you know they're all, they're all the way up here all of a sudden um but uh, but yeah, that was that was pretty much our introduction sort of thing. It was completely out of the blue, just just a message off of um off of Biv the drummer who I we we played shows together in like old bands and stuff like sort of had a like just a like a loose connection and and yes out of the, just out of the blue like oh you know we we need a new singer and bass player and we know we know you and your mate are a singer and bass player <laughs> well like, oh, that makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah, well. yeah but that, that was it match made in heaven what do you know yeah. So if you, where, where are you guys all dotted about then? How, how does that kind of work in terms of, you know, rehearsing and, and writing and stuff? How does that all go about? Uh, yeah, another good question. You're full of them, you. Um, <laughs> it's my so... job. That's <laughs> <laughs> why you make the big books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so me and Damo, uh, we live in a, a tiny little town called Stourport on Seven, which is just along the River Seven. Like, uh, it's just in the West Midlands, like like 45 minutes out from Birmingham. It's probably like our nearest big Worcestershire, city. Worcestershire, I know. Yeah, uh, Worc- Worcestershire sort of uh, is, uh, is mm-hmm. our county. Um, and then, yeah, then you got Sean, who's, who's based in Liverpool, and then and then you got Joe who plays guitar, who's in Sunderland, and then slightly further north, yet again, is Biv in in Newcastle. Um, so yeah, getting together for like rehearsals, like that was like that's kind of took some like kind of discussing to try and figure out how we're gonna do that. And eventually like we it was just like a let's figure out a sort of middle point, find a nice just rehearsal studio. Uh Huddersfield of all places is is where we kind of landed in terms of like right. It's not that like for Sean, he's definitely the close. He's like it's like a 40 minute drive for that boy, but the rest of it's like it's like a couple of hours. Like yeah. that easy. It's a bit of a trek. Oh, 100 percent Yeah, like, yeah. but but when like when we, we live like, you know, some of us live like four, four and a half hours away, like, you know, like cutting that into like two hours, it's like you can, you know, these are the sacrifices we make at the end of the yeah, day. Right. <laughs> <Tough job. laughs> Dedication. Yeah, definitely. So what's it like now being in a 
Jeff Goldblum tribute band. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> I didn't realise that was like why we record that for the longest time, you know. It's just a dumb little pun, yeah. I was like, oh, it's Goldblum, it's just a pop punk band, so they just put two words together. Like, oh, that's a cool yeah. name. I've always liked that's a hell of a cool name, but like, yeah, I didn't realise the Jeff Goldblum connection until I realised the only person we're following is Jeff Goldblum. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> and that's when things started to click. <laughs> so, so were you like already well into the band when the, the penny dropped i was embarrassingly like <laughs> yeah. the band yeah like it wasn't like first week of it either <laughs> yeah but well, it was last week wasn't it <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> man's doing a really good job of covering the fact he's just learned that the, the band penny... <laughs> <laughs> i wonder why you're following jeff goldblum on instagram <laughs> he's your biggest fan <laughs> what, what's what's your favorite jeff goldblum film do you think uh i've got to be honest i i haven't seen many you know like you've seen jurassic park i've seen Jurassic. i think now i was gonna say jurassic park i say the, the, the three biggest are probably jurassic park independence day and the fly have you seen them i uh, see just jurassic park i've seen independence uh, day but like i wouldn't have known jeff goblin was in it you know all right okay he was in a Thor film, and I thought he was pretty good. Oh, he was in Ragnarok, wasn't That's he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, in that. yeah he's good in that. Um, you know what? Just be nice. I'm going to say Jurassic World 2, maybe. He, in that? he was in one of them. He's in one of the, the... Yeah, he's in the second one, I think. Yeah, there you go. Jurassic World I, I, haven't, I haven't seen the <laughs> worlds. They're wicked, man. They're good. Have you listened to any of his albums? Because he, he does music as well. Uh, I haven't, no. Is it like Definitely. swing, like sort of? I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Nice wearing like the nice hats and stuff and the pinstripes. Mm, he's a classy guy. He's a very, classy guy. Very classy guy. Returning to the band, you, so you, I think you guys, did you join the band at the start of 2022, was it? Yeah, I think I think we got like the, I think I got like the message off of, yeah, like April sort of time. And then we had... <laughs> we didn't even have a rehearsal. It was just like we met for recording. Yeah, yeah. They right. just they needed the vocals on their on the EP re-recording because they'd already re-recorded uh like recorded the whole EP with like their old their old singer and stuff and and it just kind of like yeah just it, it, you know it just, it just needed re-recorded. So the first time we met was uh just meet like just turning up together in the studio ready to <laughs> like. But to be fair, we had like video calls and stuff and prior to that and that you know that kind of breaks the ice uh, you know a fair little bit. There's yeah. a little worry that just like we wasn't going to get on at all like i don't know why we wouldn't but i was so worried we'd get there and we just like wouldn't get along it's like oh well we've just recorded an ep with us. <laughs> <laughs> but they're lovely so, yeah, yeah it turned out right in the end yeah place. yeah, yeah that, that's important though isn't it like if you're going to spend so long with these these other people like you need to get on like you can't just be polite and just oh absolutely just, yeah we're being polite, polite. Instance, then we like we do uh, even though we don't get to meet up all that often i was like, just like right old friends in it every time yeah, like every like, time you not meet for a moment we come back and it's just the, the boys, boys the boys <laughs> so um did you both join at the same time then was it kind of like exactly the same kind of conversation oh, we're a union yeah. we're a we're yeah, complete we're, partnership yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. we, we come as a <laughs> <laughs> like honestly like since since uh since like year seven of high school since ever since we met it's like we've all, we've played in like pretty much every single band that we've ever played in together like we're, it's 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 benji and damo we just yeah, couldn't do it apart no 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 yeah. no it would be too much sadness because <laughs> yeah. i think some of the previous bands you've been in is it good grief and you know the drill you've been in them bands as well yeah, yeah. Oh. oh my guy my guy yes that, that's it yeah we, we, we were roommates for the longest time it was only like last year that uh um, that like this boy moved out but um but yeah like, we lived together for years and that's it was over lockdown that we did um we did like the good grief project it was just like we were, ever since you know the drill ended we were like wow we got to do another band we got to do another band then we just kind of like or oh, just putting it off and putting it off and then obviously we're in lockdown that you just stuck in the house together and, like nothing I was like we better do it now yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. what better time than then Exactly. It was because of good grief that um, that Biv, uh, our drummer in Goldblum, that he he kind of like was always aware that we were doing this and stuff, and essentially just kind of kept kept just on his radar sort of thing, you know. So it it all sort of worked out in a roundabout way. Yeah, yeah. So what's the um, you know with you obviously both being in previous bands together before? How does the chemistry and and the way that internally the band works differs between you know the previous projects you've been in? Oh, that's a, that's another good question. Um, it's be, it's great because you got because like I said, Sean is the OG member from Liverpool, uh, and uh, he got so he eventually got Biven who played to play drums, and 
and then Joe, who plays guitar, is essentially Biv's mate, who he he recruited. And again, they they've done, they've done bands they yeah right they well. play used to play in bands, so they're they they're a duo yet again. Right. So <laughs> and luckily for Sean, he recruits yet another duo. So he's got these two like little like best mates either side of him, just like and he's just stuck in between, <laughs> like, and he's gonna deal with just like the you know these these parents and the dad on the back. Oh yeah, a bunch of little shitty kids just. Running around being <laughs> playing grab <laughs> yeah. I like the the teacher on a on a field trip on a school trip. Oh, hundred! Oh my goodness, a gig that like a yeah, really gig day. Is. It's just it, it's exactly what it's like. <laughs> yeah, for the ball and outs ever. It's straight to Sean. You know, like yeah, he, he didn't yeah. like my song. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so Goldblum today, you've got this new EP coming out. Hazy. There's already a few tracks out there for people to listen to. How do you feel? You know, that's been kind of sitting with not only the fans that Goldblum already had, but no doubt new fans that you brought on board? Uh, I I think for the most part, like everyone seems to be super receptive. Like, like I haven't, I haven't seen many negative comments at all. I think I've seen like one person say like, Oh, like I love the new stuff. But I wish there was a bit, there was a, you know, there was, we were, there was a dark, you know, you did some darker stuff that was yeah, like yeah. the first EP kind of was and that, but um. But I'm lucky for them, you know, there, there might just be some darkness on the on the last track to come. So, you know, but yeah, for the most part, like it's it's been great. You know, like we seem to have picked up a lot of new fans from this release in particular. And that, um, it's yeah, it's been, it's been great so far. Yeah. We've got a we've got a community discord, which has got like like a bunch of like OG fans and just all, all the gang in there. Just like they're such like they're the hardcore. The yeah, hardcore. yeah, yeah. They're just. Bloomers, good, bloomers, we call them. Yeah, <laughs> they are the bloomers. Um, they're such good fans and they're so receptive to stuff. But like, yeah, they've been really enjoying things, everything so far. We always give them a track like a day early. We leak it to them because they, right. they're good. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's like, it's like a street team, essentially, isn't it? In a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems right. So they're like supporting you in that way to give them a kind of a sneak peek into what's coming out. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's it. That's it. You know, it's it's all, you know, it all, it all, does it all works itself out, you know. If you're a if you if you're a heavy fan and you know you get the you get you reap the rewards. Yeah, definitely. So I guess then if if the Europe EP before this one was kind of already basically written and mostly recorded, this is kind of like for you two your first hands on project with with Goldblum. What was that like then having to be able to put your imprint on on this then this release? Like so exciting! Like I, it was a uh, because soon after we kind of. Uh, you know, like did the recording of of uh, the vote, the you know, re-recording of the vocals for Double or Nothing. Uh, it was just like we were instantly just kind of looking forward because I'd like when when I first joined, I I just sent a load of demos that I had that could have been good grief songs, I guess, like just just to the boys and that, and they were instantly like, yes, 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 like yeah, this one's great, this one's great, like just really like receptive to these demos and stuff. So it was just instantly like, oh, like let's work on some songs. Like it, it was just like pure like vibes and just. It's, it was just really good and positive for the most part, I'd say. It's a lot more, like, you can't help but be more excited because it's so much more personal. Like, Double or Nothing, that was really cool. But, like, you know, when it's something that you've, like, been there to yeah. work on it and seen it evolve from, like, the demo to, like, the polish thing, like, yeah. Then, like, that's kind of why this whole, like, drip feeding it thing is so hard. Because, like, I just want it out. I just want yes. people to hear the last one, especially the new one i'm very excited for the new one yeah but that's that's the way the world works now like the industry you've got to drip feed it to get on those playlists and get all the attention because people's attention spans are are shorter than ever yeah you're bang on the head unfortunately (laughs) (laughs) and i think it's like i wish i wish more bands i liked kind of did that i love when bands do it but <laughs> when it's your music you just want it out there i'm the exact same just like what oh, a whole album like oh god like, i ain't got time for that <laughs> one song a month though Whoa. oh okay <laughs> <Not talking. laughs> that's, that's playlist culture for you guys it is man like tick uh, with tiktok has ruined us i reckon <laughs> uh, playing all on tiktok yeah so why did you go with the name Hazy for the EP? Why is that what encapsulates this collection of songs? Um, because it just sort of <laughs> like it almost exactly what's going on now. Like the whole the whole sort of process, like like the way kind of referring back to a previous question you asked, like in terms of writing. So typically, uh, me, Damo, and Sean will we'll, we'll write together, and Sean will travel down from Liverpool, uh, and he'll come out down for a weekend at a time, like once every like month or something like that. 
Um, and then we'll just like work on the songs individually and send like bits back and forth and that. So as a result, like the process is like one spread out over a really long time. And then just like, you just, just weekends get muddled up and like just the whole thing was sort of hazy. And it was just like, just everything about it was just, just a little, like a blur, a blur. Yeah, it was a little bit dis- disjointed, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's like, you can't quite remember when things happened. It's like we recorded the, we recorded FML, which is like the, the second single we put out. We recorded that like in November of last year and then all the, like the other four songs in like January of this year, which in it like, because originally we we're just going to do a single, but then we we're like, no, this is going to be part of an EP. And it's just, and again, it, like I said, the whole thing's just so hazy. Like it was just all over the shop initially, like plans were changing constantly and that. So, so yeah, it just, it was very fitting, you know? Would you say there was kind of like, like say you were originally going to go for a single and it's kind of like disjointed the the writing and, and recording sessions there. Then was the did the, the kind of the EP direction not really come into play until later down the line, or was there always kind of like a vision to to do an EP after you'd done like a couple of tracks? In terms of direction, like this is straight up just I I would say a bunch of good songs. They're, they're, you know, it's not there's no like big themes or overarching. It was just like the aim of the game. Which is in certain in a way worked out well that we like released every song as a single. Essentially, we did. We just wanted like just like a collection of singles, like just bangers. Like that, you know. No, uh, we want to do an album one day, and then and when we, and if and when we do an album, that's when you know that we'll we'll get into like theming it and and really like it, we talk about it all the time. Like we talk about doing an album all the time. Like, the, but but in terms of like this this collection of songs, it was like right, we got like like you know two like new songwriters in the band and like it's just this is new gold bloom let's just put some some songs out you know uh and and that's what it is essentially you know yeah well i guess that leads to my next question which is i guess along with you to having to get your hands on this one what do you think this ep delivers and achieves that maybe double or nothing didn't like what does it kind of bring to the table that you, you couldn't quite do on double or nothing it's definitely a different sound I think it's a bit more diverse, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, like, yeah, Double or Nothing, like, is love that EP, brilliant EP, but it's very, like, it's almost themed, isn't it? Like, all the songs have, like, the same feel to it, I feel like. Yeah, like, it's definitely a pop-punk EP. Which, oh, yeah. Which this is as well, like, but... It's just a little bit more... Experimental, like, yeah. um, I'm going to use more experimental, you know, like, there is, there's, there's you know, there's more risks taken in, in that, I would say, with just different sounds and rhythms and and chord progressions and stuff, you know, it's just... You know, that's something we, like, we always, we definitely, like, with us coming in as well, like, we love so much different music and that, like, so it, we, we instantly just, like, we, you know, we want to do, we wanted to do, like, a disco song, a drum and bass song, like, just just all different types of genres and stuff, so, and, and this EP is definitely just, like, a little taste of you know being different i think mm-hmm. yeah yeah for sure like the way you write benji as well you do you love just like get your fingers in some production bits like always make sure you got some synths on the go or just some effects and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. i feel like that can bring like some electric drums or something yeah oh, yeah, you oh, yeah, yeah. Drums. <laughs> Add a little bit of flair to a track you know so was there anything in particular that was inspiring you to whilst you were you know writing these songs like any, any particular bands or or albums that were kind of the 1975 important. like they're always such a big inspiration like i said in terms of like just like genre kind of breaking and stuff just doing whatever they want like on whatever song like just no you know there's no there's no barriers there is there vocally as well you take a lot because you love your wordy stuff like your little wordy version yeah, stuff and true. it's very it's like Almost like storytelling, like a Matty Healy sort of thing. And... Mm, I'll tell you that compliment. I'll tell you. Yeah. That <laughs> well, I, I believe as well the EP was it mixed by James Wisner, and he's worked with just a couple of small bands like Paramore and Under Oath. Uh, yes, that's, <laughs> yes, that's that's the that's the one. That's the guy. Yeah. What What was it like working with him in terms of you know br- bringing that end product in terms of the you know the production value? Like, oh, he was like rapid fire in terms of like mixes you know like like revisions and stuff i think we had like two or three oh, on both sides nailed like, it nailed it like first try. yeah like, yeah a couple of little like things where we're just being fussy but like, yeah, like nailed it yeah we could have put out like his first like mixes that we got back and like and that would probably probably would have been fine sort of thing like yeah he just just smashed it on the you know from the word go man knows yeah. knows yeah efficient is the is the word i'd use <laughs> 
And you've also been not long ago signed to a Wolf at Your Door Records, you know, pretty esteemed label in terms of, you know, the UK scene and the bands that's kind of helped push to the forefront. And now you guys are on there. How did that all come about? Like it, it was um, between like soon after Double or Nothing, we were we were sort of we were in talks with a couple of different labels about like just just discussion options and stuff. And then and then, yeah, like we just got an email off of um from from Wolf of Your Door, just just expressing interest, and we just kind of had held like com- conversations, and then they seemed really invested and, and interested in us, and like and it, it's just a great ma- matchup for the most part. Like just everything we've kind of wanted to do, they've just, like, every, you know like in terms of songs and that they've just been like, yep, yep, all good. Like just all the way along the way, like they've been happy to let us. But but yeah, like no, they've just been supportive all the way. They they, they haven't like you know meddled in the slightest. It's, it's, they've literally just been happy to facilitate and and push and uh, yeah, just back us essentially. And uh, like and seemingly, you know, they they continue yeah. continue to you know like there's there's no there's no sign of that partnership ending. As it far seems as like they've got faith and like oh, it's just a good lad as well, isn't he? Oh yeah, our, our contact. We're in regular contact with like I don't even know what he does the label, but it's just the guy called Leo, and he's just a he's just a boy. He just sorts us out and sends uh, sends us money to get recording. Sometimes you know, <laughs> out, useful. Yeah, <laughs> what more can you ask for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like they're they're like a pretty you know laid back label. Then like they're just letting you guys do your own thing. They're not kind of interjecting and saying, well, this this is what you should kind of do to create a single. Because you know, there's there's so many stories where labels are. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. Like, like there's like you know we get like bits of guidance and advice and stuff, but like nothing in, like overbearing in the slightest. Um, I think we're like one of the first like kind of pop punk bands that they've had on the label in a while, sort of thing. So, like I don't know if that has any bearing or not, but yeah, they're just they're just happy to kind of just you know they have their faith in what we're doing at least anyway, which is which is always you know good. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like, want. Uh, they're they're like rather than them like trying to like tell us what, how to do it and stuff they're more there to like help us and guide us like you know yeah, when, when it's it, needed, yeah. they're like there for you and like they're just sorting out good things an for amazing us. helping hand for sure yeah it's more like advice and instead of telling you this is how it has to be done yeah yeah that's it that's it yeah well, on top of a label you know you've, you guys have had quite a lot of praise over the past year or so you know you've got alternative press giving you you know kudos you've got the guys over it State of the Scene podcast, there they have said good things about you, and then you've got BBC Radio One Play, which is massive. How excited are you guys to be getting this EP out there and showing the world this whole collection of songs? Oh, it's 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 so it's like I'm gonna use the word validating. Like when you say all that, it feels like a little validating because like there's you know there's times where you know there's definitely time, times where you're thinking like ah oh, like like this this you know this just doesn't seem to be getting picked up like uh, you know you definitely just have your self doubt sort of moments so so when these wins come along like they feel so massive especially like the, the radio one plays in particular like uh, you know they just feel so big they're just it's you know it just hits home like real you know real real good like um it just you know it's just positive it's just like you signs that we're doing the right sort of thing and and you know, making the right sort of noises, I guess. But, uh, but, but yeah, like, but, you know, they, like I said, those, those sort of things, they, they really help push on when, you know, any, any times, you know, any kind of self doubt moments, you know, we're still little. Yeah. Well, it helps you get that reach that a lot of bands don't manage to get, you know, a lot of bands don't get those achievements in, in their whole like careers. And sometimes they go for 10 plus years, you know. Oh, that's it. Like, you know, for, forever grateful for every single, you know, every single little thing like that. It's just like, you know, like memories forever, essentially. Like, it? like ridiculously exciting. Like, I love telling my missus about it when we get like, oh, he's big bro, bro, I can't wait to be like 67 years old in the pub. <laughs> tell you about the time I was playing on Radio 1. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit old to play those songs uh, yourself at that, at that age, but who knows? Oh, get up, get up on the iPhone twenty. Fucking doing it. Oh, of course, yeah. We're just we're pestering everyone. <laughs> get on YouTube. Type <laughs> <laughs> in Goldbloom. That's it. Fifty twelve years ago. <laughs> well, you've also got a uh, like a headline show to celebrate the release at the end of the month as well. So, how are you guys feeling about that? I think it's is it your first headline show in in quite a while. Oh yeah, for us in the band, it's our first ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we haven't played a headline uh, since joining. 
um it, oh, it's gonna be sick like we got so many like just just like friends and stuff going for a start as well but then like but, like it's been selling great as well it's a tiny little venue as well like it should be packed out and and it's gonna be, it's just gonna be wicked like the, it's the same day as the uh as the, you know the actual ep kind of coming out and the last song drop in so that'll be that'll be awesome as well yeah just think about how amazing that's going to feel if you've got like so many people singing those words back like they already know all the words to the to the songs as well yeah that's oh, I'm silly and really looking forward to it it should be a great time yeah so what else have you guys got planned for the rest of 2023 and 2024 can we tell them about the thing what well, single no nah, the other one i was on about what acoustic nah, cool. <laughs> oh oh I mean, maybe we might be uh, we might we might be playing some shows next year, going on a little, yeah, a little sneaky yeah, around. Be cool about it. <laughs> <laughs> no tour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about it. I think, like, <laughs> stop. We haven't signed an NDA or anything, so I think no, I think we're great. good. Um, yeah, we're looking at trying to get a tour done like early next year. Then yeah, I play some shows, get about, and that you know, like it's it's. It, again like since joining the band we haven't played a proper tour or anything it's just been like the odd kind of show scattered here about, like here there and there so to do a proper run and that like will, will be great proper, yeah. proper bonding experience yeah, you know. time with the boys <laughs> <laughs> you can play some gigs as well as well yeah 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 but spend some time with the boys <laughs> <laughs> well who knows depending on how well the ep goes you might get like a really big support slot booked in oh be lovely that would wouldn't it fingers crossed hey fingers crossed <laughs> what would be a band that you you know you'd you want to tour with the most like would it be 1975 would it be i don't know fallout boy paramore my chemical romance wh- whoever well, if we're talking big bands it's super obvious it, isn't it? it's like dude come on you know like you've purposely <laughs> avoided the one band right like you know who we want to support surely who do you want to support it begins with B. That's that's the clue. It ends in 182. Oh. <laughs> Bling 182. Oh, man. Like, the biggest <laughs> pop punk band. Like, how could you not? Like, mm-hmm. I cry. I cry every single night. <laughs> like, that, that's the absolute, like, dream. But, like, in terms of, like, being a bit, a little more realistic, Neck yeah. Deep. Neck Deep, support Neck Deep on a tour would be, like, wicked. Are you seeing Blink on this, um, the tour they're doing, then? Saturday. Yeah. 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 Saturday. We go away. <laughs> podcast be out by then or nah 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 next Thursday brother oh it was really good gang it was really great <laughs> that's just a sick time I can't believe they shouted us out as well <laughs> and you went on stage I think like yeah uh, let's play some songs as well oh, so <laughs> thanks very much guys I really appreciate your time uh, I'm sure the CP will do really well before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening and of course get ready for the uh, headline show to support the release any final words, anything you want to say, anything you want to plug, close yours. Oh, when's, uh, when's this new single out, Benj? October, October 27th is the date, the final single off of Hazy Drops, which uh, is the final gem in the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> that is Hazy. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll be playing in Liverpool on October 27th. Tickets available at goldbloom.co.uk. <laughs> yeah, how good that was. That was, you smash it. we got a website too with like... Uh, bro, I literally just kid said the website. Did you? Goldbloom.co.uk. Goldbloom.co.uk. He said it twice now. He made it though. And it's really good. It's a really good website. Right. That's everything. Thank you so much for having us, Zach. Yeah, no worries. Thanks again. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys. I don't know, at a show soon, and we can actually speak in person as opposed to over a computer screen. Oh, it'll be a pleasure, dude. Cannot wait. Yeah. Cannot wait. Cool, guys. Yeah, I'll let you go. Uh, Enjoy your evening, and take care. You too, man. Nice one. Take care. Bye. Bye. And that is it. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you enjoyed this or any other episode of the podcast, then please leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. If you want to support the podcast further, you can go and give it a follow on social media, pick up something from the merch store, or subscribe to the Patreon to get early access to episodes. All the links can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's itsnotaphase.co.uk. Thanks again. Hopefully catch you on the next one. And remember, it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle.